I live. I'm a housewife. My name is Ellen Jones. That Tuesday in July started out just like any other day the past few months. There was no warning it was to be the most terrifying day of my life. I remember thinking how tired I felt. Even the housework seemed drudgery and so meaningless with George confined to his bed. No one to see or care even. And then I got scared because I knew I was beginning to feel sorry for myself. George was the one who was ill, and he needed all of my thoughts and attention, and above all, my cheerfulness. I tried not to think about us, about George, how he'd changed. I told myself it was just my imagination that things would be different when he was well and strong again. Then I thought I heard him call. George! Did you call? George, are you all right? Yes, Ellen. You want anything? Not now. I've just begun work on an insurance report for the office. Well, call me, dear, if you need me. Okay. Somehow, I had an odd feeling. There was something about George's voice. I found myself thinking about the first time we'd met. How different he was in those days. I remember I was sitting in Dr. Graham's office. We were talking. I played one game of checkers and two games of rummy. And I'd written letters to a wife, a mother, and a sweetheart. And I listened for a half an hour to a homesick young Ensign from Texas. He was awful cute. Now, what else can I do to help boost the morale around here, huh? You could go out to dinner with me. <laughs> we get about halfway through the soup, and you get a call from the hospital. You're right. Mm -hmm. I guess my courting will have to wait till after the hostilities. <laughs> There's a compound fracture down the hall who's waiting to see me, but I'll be tied up for a while. Oh? They tell me he's feeling blue. You see, his wife's expecting a baby in a minute. And I think he can stand some cheering up. It's practically done. You later, Ann. Oh, I'm sorry. They told me I could find Dr. Graham in here. You ought to be along any minute. Why don't you come on in? Sure, thank you. Are you a patient here, sir? <laughs> in a naval hospital? No, no. I'm just a friend of the docks. Flew in last night with the ferry command. The only thing wrong with me is a double barrel hangover. <laughs> Too bad. Dr. Graham will be detained, so I'm taking you for an airing. And maybe he doesn't want to go for an airing. He doesn't. There's nothing a woman likes better than shoving a man around. I'm Ellen Brown. Doesn't suit you at all. It's much too plain. Oh, I'm sorry. I tell my parents about it, but they're still back in Kansas City. Now, what can I do for you, young man? I can think of a lot of things. Oh? Well, shall we begin with a game of cards? Mm -mm. 
Well, I, I could read the newspaper to okay. you. I could write a letter for you. I know. I know. I'll sit right here. You can tell me all about that wonderful baby you're expecting. Hmm? The baby you're expecting. Does Ripley know about this? I beg your pardon? Skip it. Uh, which is your bad leg? Well, neither one of them's working very well today. Oh, my head. Is your head bothering you? Terribly. Both of them. Would you like me to rub it for you? You couldn't think of anything nicer. Good. Yeah. Now relax. Oh, close your eyes. Now just think of something pleasant. Pretty soon you'll be going home to your wife. Won't that be wonderful? Mm. Think what she looks like. How pretty she is. Mm. Lovely. Mm. Beautiful blue eyes. Short nose, soft brown hair, and lovely, kissable lips. Well, there's nothing wrong with your morale, young man. I'll recommend to the doctor that you be sent home to your wife immediately. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Wait, you're all dressed. Naturally. Well, uh, George. Hello, Randy. Son of a girl. What are you doing here? Enjoying myself immensely. His leg isn't even broken. No? No, it hey, isn't. Hey, Doc, what kind of nurses do you have around here, anyway? Hey, what I, goes on here, Ellen? Well, when I came in here, he was lying there all covered up, and he let me make an absolute idiot of myself. You know, very much like Graham. Your Dr. Graham was going to find himself in exactly the same position as that little boy. But we're not going to have him here again. But that doesn't change the fact that you're wrong about him. He's been wonderful to you, so... Thoughtful and giving you so much time. Maybe that's because he's a bachelor, huh? No home life. He's been a good friend to us. Ellen, time's limited, so you must listen carefully. Randy Graham may have you, all right. But he'll be disappointed with what he gets. George, please. George, I, I, I can't let you talk this way anymore. I'll fill this up. I'll be downstairs if you want me. You'd better wait, Ellen. I've written the district attorney asking him to make a complete investigation if anything happens to me today before he can get help to me. Why do you torture yourself like this? Why do you imagine things that don't exist? <laughs> a letter exists. It proves you're trying to kill me. But I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> if I can't help you, George, then I'm going to get someone else in who can. It's not me that needs help now, Ellen. You gave that letter to the postman yourself just a while ago. Yes, yeah, yes, I gave him the letter, the one that you wrote about insurance policies. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't recognize a district attorney's name if you saw it. Nobody ever does. Isn't that strange? Everybody knows he's a district attorney, but nobody ever knows his name. We are going to get someone else in, another doctor. Because this is all in your mind. My mind is fine. Just to reassure you on that point, let me tell you that letter was about insurance. I told the district attorney how much insurance we had on each other's lives. That if either one of us died, the other would do very nicely for the rest of his life. Or her life, very comfortably indeed. Oh. I also told them how you and Dr. Graham, how you were working together to aggravate my condition so it wouldn't look like murder. George! I also told them how you were gradually giving me overdoses of the heart medicine. But that isn't true. Anyone would know that isn't true. Would they? Why is that bottle almost empty, huh? We only got it the other day. Well, you... 
You told me that you spilled it on the tray. You told me that yourself, George. You didn't tell the druggist that. Oh, Mr. Phillips will make an excellent witness against you, Ellen. He'll be the first if anything happens to me. And let me tell you, there'll be others. The letter takes care of everything. The druggist, the medicine, the doctor. He's in it, too. Oh, you've implicated your old friend Graham, you know. Nothing's going to happen to you. I don't know whether you're doing this to frighten me or not, but I'm going downstairs and get that letter back from that postman. You're not going anyplace anymore, Ellen. Because I'm going to kill you. Yeah, I decided that definitely this morning. <laughs> you, you, you couldn't mean this, George. You couldn't. George, you know I wouldn't hurt anybody. Anybody, much less you. George, think it's me, it's Alan, it's Alan. But you, but you did want to be rid of me. It was in your mind. That's why you feel so guilty, isn't it? No. The letter will take care of Graham. I'll take care of you myself. I'll make it look like self-defense. Please don't. There are just too many things against you, Ellen. You used to say that you were lonesome until you met me. George. George, you love me. I love you, George. Oh, and since I've been sick, since he's been coming to the house, you've hated the sight of me. No, I haven't. one of those awful dreams. The kind I used to have when George was overseas. That man lying there was George, my husband. He was dead. He died trying to kill me. What is it that you want, Mr. Phillips? Why, it's about that heart medicine you want refilled. Yes? Can't refill it without another prescription. I see. We'll just let it go. Let it go? That is, until I talk with Dr. Graham. Oh. By the way, Mrs. Jones, according to my records, you got that prescription filled just the other day. But my husband knocked that bottle over on the tray and spilled it. That's what happened. I promise you, that's what happened, Mr. Phillips. All right, all right, Mrs. Jones. You don't have to promise anything. I didn't tell you before because I didn't think it was necessary. Well, it wasn't. Look here, Mrs. Jones, I didn't... George right. said that Mr. Phillips would be a witness against no. me. I just thought it was such a... A witness. got that prescription filled. I'd warn you, that's all. Yes. I'll see that you get another prescription. Yes, you just get in touch with Dr. Graham. Why didn't I tell him about George? That letter. I had to get that letter back. I couldn't tell anyone about George until I got that letter back. I could feel the woman next door watching me. Maybe she'd be a witness against me, too. She could tell them how I ran out of the house and then back in again. How strangely I was acting. It wouldn't matter what she thought if I could only get that letter back. And I tried to think, which way did he go? The postman? Yeah. Yeah, old uh, Oddball plowed his way through here a little while ago. Oh, which way did he go, do you know? Uh, that away. Oh, thanks. 
Yeah, it's that way towards Merritt Street. You know. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. You know, every time I go home at night, I always tell my wife, Laura, if it wasn't for that pension plan of yeah. you, I, I, I just never get up. I just drop. Remember now, you could call me anytime you need me, even if you just think you need me. Oh, thanks. I don't know what I'd do sometimes if I didn't remember that. Goodbye. Goodbye. You're doing fine. <laughs> thanks. get that beautiful new tricycle. It's my tricycle. It's a horse. Oh? A palomino. My grandpa gave it to me. Oh, he did? Well, it's beautiful, Billy. I'm not Billy. I'm Hoppy. Hoppy? Now, who's Hoppy? Don't you know who Hoppy is? No, I'm afraid don't I don't. Don't you have television? What? Don't you have television? No. Want to see mine? Sure. Look inside. Well, look at that. Hmm? Hoppy's there, too, just like in a real color. Why, of course, I know him. That's Hopalong Cassidy. Uh -huh. Well, save many people today, Hoppy. Oh, six to a hundred. Don't try any tricks now. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. Do you have any cookies? No, I haven't. See, the groceryman hasn't come yet, but I will have later. You know what I do with the bad men? No, what do you do? I dynamite them into little pieces, shot them, put them in jail. Oh, I don't think the real Hoppy would treat even bad men that way. Well, really what I did was my soon time up, throw him in jail. Well, that sounds like a lot more work and more dangerous, too. Yeah, I'd take care of you, didn't I? Yeah, you sure did. Can I come in? Oh, well, honey, I I'm sorry. I'm afraid not. My husband isn't feeling very well today. See? I won't make any noise. If I was eating cookies, I couldn't even talk. Uh, no, you couldn't. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what you do. After the groceryman comes, that'll be around 12 o'clock, see? You come to the back door very quietly, and I'll have some cookies for you. Okay? Okay. I'll ride my horse up and down and see that no bad people make any noise. Because I'm your friend, aren't I? That's right, Hoppy. You're my friend. Toot toot! I'm an engine, I'm an engine. I'm gonna keep that car in the crossing. Toot toot! Toot toot! Toot toot! Toot toot! Well, George, you weren't out of bed just now, were you? No. Oh, it must be the heat. I could have sworn I saw what somebody took you right... so long? What, dear? It took you so long. Sorry, dear, I was talking to Billy. I should say, Hoppy. Let me change your pillow. You know, he's the little boy I told you about who just moved into the neighborhood. The one with the glasses, you know. Oh, he's an awful sweet little kid. What were you talking to Rennie Graham about? That's what I'm interested in. We were talking about you, dear. And if I don't have this letter for him when I go home, he'll be awfully upset. Why should he? Well, you see, uh, I I'm afraid that he said a lot of very strong things, and he regrets them now. You can explain to him that uh, it won't be delivered. It'll be held right here till the form comes back. Yeah, it? but it's so hard to reason with a person who who's ill. Well, you know how it is. They, they uh, exaggerate the importance of everything. And what with his heart condition, I wouldn't want to take a chance. Really, I, I, I must have the letter for him when I go home now. I, I must. Mrs. Jones, I think I can take a chance. Thank you. I'll let you fill out the form for your husband. Oh, that's very nice. On one condition. Yes. I, of course, must make sure the contents of the letter. What do you mean? It'll be strictly confidential, but of course the letter must be opened and read. Open the letter? Yes, to make sure that it is the letter to the district attorney, as you say. No, no, you can't. I beg your pardon. I won't have anyone prying into my husband's mail. Prying? I won't let her back, you understand? Unopened. Mrs. 
Jones, I was about to tell you, if you'd let me finish, that I would call your husband for you. Explain the situation reasonably and ask his permission for you to open the letter, not me. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I, I didn't mean to say that. But you don't seem to understand. No, I don't understand, Mrs. Jones. And I have no alternative but to send the letter on through to the distributing room. Good day. Jones. Mr. Jones. I don't want to intrude, but I couldn't help noticing you all day long. I've had the feeling that you... that something was wrong. And I'd so like to be able to help you. Oh, I know we haven't been too neighborly. But trouble's something else again. Can I help you? Is there something I can do for you? Of course, I know you're anxious to get up to your husband. So you run out and see if he's comfortable and settled. And then you come over. Or call me. I'll be waiting for you. She was kind. She might have been my friend. She might have helped me. And then I remembered Rand. He said he was going to stop in again to see George. I couldn't let him do that. He mustn't come here again. Ever. Dr. Graham's office. Hello, this is Mrs. Jones. Is Dr. Graham there? Oh, he isn't here, Mrs. Jones. Can you locate him, please, a surgeon? Please do. It's very important that Dr. Graham doesn't come here today. Now, I hope you understand. Of course. I'll do my best. Goodbye. Bye. Doctor, I just called your office and I just told you what nurse that I... Well, uh, George felt he wanted to consult another doctor. A and I did, too. And, and he just left, and, and I really think it would be better if you didn't see him again today. Oh? Uh, but what, uh, what doctor did you call? Oh, uh, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I've forgotten his name. I, I called the lady in the store for her doctor, and she gave me his telephone number, and uh, George liked it very much. I see. Yes. Is he a heart specialist? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, that is, I, I think so. Mm -hmm. What was his diagnosis? I don't know. I, really, George is feeling much better. I'll call you tomorrow. Now, wait a minute. What's happened, really? Well, you see, after... No, no, please don't, please. Don't go up there. It's better for everybody if you just don't go up there. A gun. He tried to kill me, but before I could shoot, he. He. Now take it easy, Ellen. Take it easy.
And so I took the gun out of his hand, and I hid it. I had to. It looked as though he died protecting himself from me. All right, Helen, but why didn't you want me here? I don't know how to tell you. That letter said that, that we planned his death together. That you told me to aggravate his condition, to give him overdoses of his heart medicine. And if they come here and find you here, they'll think it's true, just like George said. Helen, his mind was going. I tried to tell you this morning. He wasn't responsible. They won't believe me. How could they? I did everything wrong. Everything, just like he said I would. The druggist, and then the postman, and then the superintendent. And I even lied to his aunt. They'll all think I was guilty, all of them. You're not guilty, Helen. Remember that. Oh, I, I, I know. The police will be here any minute. Now, you better go. You better go right now. Hello, Miss Jones. I uh, got a letter for you this afternoon. I didn't put it in the slot because, well, I, I guess I should feel kind of funny coming here like this after what happened between you and me this noon. But it's all right. I understand. Uh, here's the letter you gave me to mail this morning. What? Surprise, I didn't realize it at first, a thick letter like that and only one stamp. Those public officials like the district attorney won't accept postage due mail, you know. Insufficient postage. Yeah, the other end just won't uh, pay the postage in these cases, and we have to return to the senders. How do you like that? Not enough postage, and we have to deliver them twice. Yes. Yeah, Crazy business. You know, some folks might think I'm stingy. I know these extra stamps cost only just a few cents, but... Yes, I understand. If I multiply you by everybody else... Yes, I, I understand. And mm. Thanks again for the letter, Mr. Carson. Oh, that's all right. Goodbye. And thanks again, Mr. Carson, oh, for you're being the... Oh, welcome. <laughs> oh. oh, it's so funny. It's so funny. Go ahead. It'll do you good. <laughs> people meant when they said their heart was broken. All that was left of George and me in our marriage was that little pile of ashes. I knew that somewhere, somehow, I'd have to begin to live again. But right then, all I could do was pray to lose that one day, that one terrifying day. <laughs> 